Good evening, everyone. I'm Amy Carr for Folger Theatre. We want to take a moment to thank you so much for joining us this evening. This performance of the Scottish play employs strobe lighting effects, sudden loud sounds, and graphic stage violence. <laughs> Mr. Posner and Mr. Teller have asked me to read you a message about this. Violence and magic on a stage is not just a way to spice up an old show with cheap thrills. Stage violence lets us look death in the eye and live to tell the tale. Magic lets us experience the world through the eyes of a madman, but keep our sanity. When we share the power of creating make-believe murders and monsters, we are celebrating the health safety and moral strength of our real lives. <laughs> May all our nightmares and daggers remain in this. The magic <laughs> Again in thunder Lightning. or in rain, in the hurly burly stone. The battle's lost and won. That will be air. Set of sun. <laughs> Say to the king the knowledge of the battle, as thou didst leave it. The merciless MacDonwald showed like a rebel's whore, but all's too weak, for brave Macbeth. Well, he deserves that name, disdaining fortune with his brandy steel, which smoked with bloody execution, like Valor's minion carved out his passage till he faced the slave, which ne'er shook hands nor bade farewell to him till Macbeth unseamed him from the nave to the chops. <laughs> <laughs> and fixed his head upon our battlements. Oh, valiant cousin. But the rebellious lords, surveying vantage with furbished arms and new supplies of men, began a fresh assault. Dismay, not this, our captains, Macbeth and Banquo. Uh, yes, as sparrows, eagles, or, or the hair of the lion. <laughs> As cannons, <laughs> overcharged with double cracks, so they doubly redoubled strokes upon the foe. <laughs> oh, but I am faint, my gases cry for help. So well thy words become thee as thy wounds. They smack of honor both. Go, get him served. <laughs> Who comes here? Our kinsmen, Ross and Lennox, and the brave Macduff. God save the king! What's king that worthy thing? From Fife, great king. That most disloyal traitor, the thane of Cawdor, began a dismal conflict. But point against point, arm against arm, we curbed his lavish spirit. And to conclude, the victory fell on us. Ah! No more, that thane of Cawdor shall deceive our bosom interest. Go, pronounce his present death. And with his former title, Great Macbeth, we'll see it done. 
What he hath lost, noble Macbeth hath won. So foul and fair a day I have not seen. Well, how far is it called the forest? <laughs> These, so withered and so wild in their attire, that look not like the inhabitants of the earth, and yet are on it. Live you? Or are you aught that man may question? You seem to understand me. By each at once her choppy finger laying upon her skinny lips. You should be women, and yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so. Speak. If you can, what are you? All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Glams. All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Cawdor. All hail, Macbeth. Thou shalt be king. King, king. Hereafter. But, sir. Why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? In the name of truth, are ye fantastical? Or that indeed which outwardly ye show? My noble partner here you greet with present grace and great prediction of noble having and of royal hope that he seems wrapped with all. To me you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time and say which grain will grow and which will not, speak then to me who neither beg nor fear your favors nor your hate. Hail, hail, hail. hail. Lesser than Macbeth. And greater. <laughs> Not so happy, yet much happier. <gasps> thou shalt beget kings. Though thou be none, so, so all hail Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth, all hail. Stay, you imperfect speaker, tell me more. Mm. Ah. By my father's death, I know I am Thane of Glans. But how of Cawdor? The Thane of Cawdor lives, a prosperous gentleman. <gasps> And to be king stands not within the prospect of belief, no more than to be caught or say from whence you owe this strange intelligence. But why, upon this blasted heath, you stop our way with such prophetic greeting? Speak! I charge you! The earth hath bubbles as the water has, and these are of them. Whither are they vanished? Into the air. And what seemed corporal melted as breath into the wind? Would they have stayed? Were such things here as we do speak about? Or have we eaten on the insane route <laughs> that takes the reason prisoner? Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. And thing of Cawdor, too, when it not so. To that self-same tune and words. Ah! Well, who's there? <laughs> the king hath happily received, Macbeth, the news of thy success. We are sent to give thee from our royal master thanks. And, for an earnest of a greater honor, he bade us from him call thee Thane of Cawdor. In which addition hail, most worthy Thane. The Thane of Cawdor lives. Why? Do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the thing lived yet? But treason's capital confessed and proved have overthrown him. Thanks. <laughs> For thy pains. Glom. And Thane of Cawdor. Two truths are told as happy prologues to the swelling act of the imperial theme. This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, cannot be good. But if ill, why hath it given me earnest of success, commencing in a truth? I am 
fain of Cawdor. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? My thought, whose murder yet is but fantastical, shakes so my single state of man that function is smothered in surmise, and nothing is but what is not. If chance will have me king, why chance may crown me without my stir. Come what come may, time and the hour runs through the roughest day. Look how our partners wrapped. New honors come upon him, like our strange garments, cleave not to their mold, but with the aid of use. Worthy Macbeth, we stay upon your leisure. Uh, give me your favors. My dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. Let us toward the king. Do you not hope your children shall be kings when those that gave the fane of Cawdor to me promised no less to them? That trusted home might yet enkindle you under the crown besides the fane of Cawdor. But tis strange, <laughs> and oftentimes to win us to our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths. Win us with honest trifles to betray us in deepest consequence. Think upon what hath chanced, and at more time, the interim having waited, let us speak our free hearts, each to other. Very gladly. Till then, enough. <laughs> cousin. The sin of my ingratitude even now weighs heavy on me. Wouldst thou had less deserved that the proportion both of payment and of thanks might have been mine, if only I have left to say, more is thy due than more than all can pay. The service and the loyalty I owe in doing it pays itself. Your highness part is to receive our duties. Welcome hither. I have begun to plant thee and will labor to see thee full of growing. Noble Banquo, thou hast deserved no less. Let me embrace thee and hold thee to my heart. There, if I grow, the harvest is your own. <laughs> <laughs> my plenteous joys, wanton in fullness, seek to hide themselves in drops of sorrow. <laughs> is execution done on Cordell? Father. I have spoke with one that saw him die. He confessed his treasons, implored your pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like the leaving it. There is no art to find the mind's construction in the face. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. Sons, kinsmen, thanes, and those whose places are the nearest know. We do establish our estate upon our eldest, Malcolm, whom we name hereafter the Prince of Cumberland, which honor must not, unaccompanied, invest him solely. But signs of nobleness like stars shall shine on all deservers. to Inverness, <laughs> and bind us further to you. I'll be myself the harbinger and make joyful the hearing of my wife with your approach. My worthy cause. They met me in the day of success, and I have learned by the perfectest report they have more in them than mortal knowledge. The Prince of Cumberland, that is a step on which I must fall down. When I burned in desire to question them further, they made themselves into air. Or else, or leave. Who all hailed me 
Thane of Cawdor. Stars, hide your fires. Hail, king that shall be. Let not light see my black and deep desires. This have I thought good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness, that thou mightst not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness is promised thee. Lay it to thy heart, and farewell. O oh, Gloms thou art, and Cawdor, and shalt be what thou art promised. Yet do I fear thy nature. It is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Thou wouldst be great, art not without ambition, but without thee illness should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou holily. Wouldst not play false, and yet wouldst wrongly win. Oh, hie thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear, and chastise with the valor of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round, which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned with all. What is thy tidings? The king comes here tonight. Oh, 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 thou art mad to say it. Is not thy master with him? Who wert so would have informed for preparation? So please you, it is true. Our day is come. Give him tending. <laughs> the raven himself is hoarse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Oh, come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here, and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood, stop up the access and passage to remorse, that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Oh, come to my woman's breasts and take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers, wheresoever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief. Come, thick night, and pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep beneath the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. Oh, great gloms. Worthy Cawdor, greater than both by the all hail hereafter. <sighs> Thy letters have transported me beyond this ignorant present, and I feel now the future in the instant. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. No, never shall sun that morrow see. Your face, my fame, is as a book where men may read strange matters. To beguile the time, look like the time. Bear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. Now he that's coming must be provided for, and you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which shall for all our days and nights to come give solely sovereign sway and masterdom. We will speak further. Only look up clear to alter favor ever is to fear. This castle hath a pleasant seat. Leave all the rest to me. The air nimbly and sweetly recommends itself unto our gentle senses. This guest of summer, the temple-haunting swallow, does approve. Where they most breed and haunt, I have observed, the air is delicate. See, ah. see, our honored hostess. Uh, the love which follows us sometime is our trouble, which still we think has love. All our service at every point, twice done and then done double, were poor and single business to contend against those honors deep and broad wherewith your majesty loads our house. Uh, <laughs> where's the vein of Cawdor? We coursed him at the heels, but he rides well, and his great love, as sharp as his spur, hath helped him home before us. 
Baron Noble Hostess, we are your guests tonight. Your servants, ever. Give me your hand. If it were done, when it is done, then it were well it were done quickly. Conduct me to mine host. We love him highly, and will continue our graces towards him. By your leave. If the assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with his surcease success, that but this blow might be the be-all and the end-all here, but here upon this bank and shoal of time we jump the life to come. But in these cases, we still have judgment here. We teach bloody instructions, which being taught, return to plague the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed, and then as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan had borne his faculty so meek, had been so clear in his great office that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet-tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off and pity like a naked newborn babe shall blow the horrid deed in every eye that tears shall drown the wind. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition, which o'erleaps itself and falls on the others. How now? What news? He hath almost supped. Have he asked for me? No, you not, he has. We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late. And I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people. <laughs> which will be worn now in their newest gloss, not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk, wherein you dressed yourself? Hath it slept since? And wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? From this time, such I account thy love. Art thou afeard to be the same in thine own act and valor as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that which thou esteemst the ornament of life and live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon I would? Prithee, peace! I dare do all that may become a man. Who dares do more is none. What beast was then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you first do it! Then you were a man, and to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. You... I have given suck, and know how tender tis to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless gums and dashed the brains out, had I so sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail! We fail! But screw your courage to the sticking place, and we'll not fail. When Duncan is asleep, whereto the rather shall his day's hard journey soundly invite him, his two chamberlains will I with wine and wassail so convince that memory, the warder of the brain, shall be a fume. Now when in swinish sleep, their drenched natures lie as in a death. What cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not put upon his spongy officers who shall bear the guilt of our great quell? Bring forth men children only. For thy 
Undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Oh. Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber and used their very daggers that they have done it? Who dares receive it other as we shall make our griefs and clamor roar upon his death? Settle and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat away and mock the time with fairest show. False face must hide what the false heart doth know. <laughs> heavy summons last like lead upon me, and yet I could not sleep. Merciful powers, restrain in me the cursed thoughts that nature gives way to in repose. How goes your night, boy? The moon is down. I've not heard the clock. She goes down at twelve. I take it tis later, sir. <laughs> Oh, ho! Take my sword. There's husbandry in heaven. The candles are all out. Take thee. That, too. Give me my sword. Who, who's there? A friend. What, oh, sir? Not yet at rest. The king's abed. He hath been in unusual pleasure and sent forth great largesse to your offices. All's well. I dreamt last night of the three weird sisters. To you they have shown some truth. I think not of them. Yet when we could entreat an hour to serve, we would spend it in some words upon that business, if you would grant the time. At your kindest leisure. If you shall cleave to my consent when tis, it shall make honor for you. So I lose none in seeking to augment it, but still keep my bosom franchised and allegiance clear. I shall be counseled. Good repose the while. Thanks, sir. The like to you. Go. Bid thy mistress, when my drink is ready, she strike upon the bell. Get me to bed. which I see before me. The handle towards my hand. Come. Let me clutch thee. I have thee not. And yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation, proceeding from the heat oppressed brain? I see thee yet in form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshalest me the way that I was going. 
and such an instrument I was to use. Mine eyes are made the fools of the other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade and dudgeon gouts of blood that was not so before. There's no such thing! It is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. Now, o'er oh, the one half world, nature seems dead. And wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. And withered murder, alarmed by his sentinel, the wolf, whose howls his watch. Thus, with his stealthy pace, the Tarquin's ravishing strides towards his design moves like a ghost. Thus sure and firm said earth, hear not my steps which way they walk, for fear thy very stones prate of my whereabouts, and take the present horror from the time which now suits with it. Well, as I threat, he lives. Words to the heat of deeds too cold breath gives. Go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. That which hath made them drunk hath made me bold. What hath quenched them hath given me fire. was the owl that shrieked. <laughs> the fatal bellman that gives the sterns good night. He is about it. The doors are open, and the surfeited grooms do mock their charge with snores. I have drugged their possets, that death and nature do contend about them, whether they live or die. Who's there? What ho? Alack, I am afraid they are awaked, and tis not done. The attempt and not the deed confounds us. But hark, I laid their daggers ready. He could not miss them. My husband. I have done the deed. <gasps> Dost thou not hear a noise? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did you not speak? When? Now. As I descended? I. Hark! Who lies in the lower chamber? Donald Bain. Oh, this is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. There's one did laugh in his sleep. And one cried murder, that they did wake each other. I stood and heard them, but they did say their prayers and address them again to sleep. There are two lodged together. One cried, God bless us, and amen the other, as they had seen me with these hangman's hands. Listening their fear, I could not say amen when they did say God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. But wherefore could not I pronounce amen? I had most need of blessing, and I'm stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought after these ways, so it will make us mad. Now go, get some water, and wash this filthy witness from your hand. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go, Carrington, and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think what I have done. Look on it again, I dare not. Be firm of purpose. Give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are but his pictures. If he do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms with all, for it must seem their guilt. Methought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep. The innocent sleep. Sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care. The death of each day's life. 
So labours back, balm of hurt minds, great nature's second course, chief nourisher in life's feast. Still it cried, sleep no more. To all the house, Gloms hath murdered sleep, and therefore Cordor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. When tis thy mocking? How is it with me, when every noise appalls me? What hands are here? They pluck out mine eyes. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hands? No. This, my hand, will rather the multitudinous seas incarnadite, making the green one red. My hands are of your color, but I shame to wear a heart so white. I hear a knocking. A little water clears us of this deed. How easy is it then? Oh, your constancy hath left you unattended. More knocking. Go, get on your nightgown, lest occasion call us and show us to be watchers. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. To know my deed, to best not know myself. <laughs> Wait, Duncan, with thy knocking. I would thou couldst. He'd have lots of turn in the key. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? In the name of Beelzebub. Well, here's a farmer that hanged himself on the expectation of plenty. Welcome to hell, farmer. <laughs> Come on in. You have hankies enough about you? Huh? Hankies to mop your brow? You may borrow mine, sir. <laughs> Where did I put that? <laughs> it's pretty warm down here. You might need that. Oh, there it is. Fell down a bit. <laughs> Try that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, very absorbent. <laughs> you, you gotta mop your brow. <laughs> Suit yourself. <laughs> here you will sweat. devil's name. Oh, here's it. Here's it. What are you? <laughs> you don't know? Sometimes this, sometimes that. Faith, here's an equivocator that could swear in both the scales against either scale, but could not equivocate his way into heaven. Welcome hither. You need a hanky? <laughs> no? Well, come on in, equivocator. Knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock. Habla inglés? <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Lucy. Lucy who? Lucy Fur. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. I hope you guessed my name. <laughs> knock, knock. Interrupting hellhound. <laughs> Hell. Damnation at her! Oh, right there. Feel how sore that is right there. <laughs> uh, you, man. Very soothing poke you have there. 
All right, all together now. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ivan. Ivan who? Ivan, enormous, monstrous, throbbing, hangover. <laughs> well, this place is too cold for hell, so I will devil porter it no further. And I had thought to have let in some of all the professions that go the primrose way to <laughs> the everlasting bonfire. <laughs> Knock! 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 Uh, oh, God see good dead, sirs. I uh, pray you, remember the porter. <laughs> Was it so late, friend there, you went to bed that you lie so late? Hey, sir, we were carousing until the second cock. Or third cock. <laughs> Some cock, rather. <laughs> and, uh, drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. What three things does drink especially provoke? Mary, sir, nose painting, <laughs> um, sleep, and urine. <laughs> Matter of fact, pardon me, I really, I really get it. Oh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lechery, it provokes and unprovokes. It provokes the desire but it takes away the performance. <laughs> it makes him and it mars him. <laughs> it sets him on and it takes him off. It persuades him and disheartens him. It makes him stand too. <laughs> and <laughs> not stand too, too. In conclusion, <laughs> Yeah, that burns. <laughs> it, uh, it uh, equivocates him in his sleep. And giving him the lie leaves him. <laughs> Remember the porter. <laughs> Is thy master stirring? I'm knocking. Have to wake him. Here he comes. Good morrow, noble sir. That is. Ross. Good Macduff. The king stirring, worthy Thane? Not yet. He did command me to call timely on him. I've almost slipped the hour. I bring you to him. I know this is a joyful trouble to you, but yet it is one. The labor we delight in physics pain. This is the door. Make so bold to call, for tis my limited service. <clears throat> Goes the king hence today? He does. He, he did a point so. The night has been unruly. Where we lay, our chimneys were blown down. And as they say, lamentings heard in the air. Strange screams of death and prophesying with accents terrible. The watchful owl clamored the live long night. Some say the earth was feverish and did shake. Twas a rough night. <laughs> ah! Horror! 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 Tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name thee. Confusion now hath made his masterpiece. Most sacrilegious murder hath broke up the Lord's anointed temple. What is to say? Speak to his majesty. Approach the chamber and destroy your sight. Awake. Awake. Ring the alarm bell. Murder, treason, Banquo, Donald Bain, Malcolm. Awake. <laughs> This town we sleep, death's counterfeit, and look on death itself. Ring the bell! What's the business that such a hideous trumpet calls to parley the sleepers of the house? Speak. Who? <sighs> speak? Oh, gentle lady, it is not for you to hear what I can speak. The repetition in a woman's ear would murder as it fell. Banquo, Banquo, our royal masters murdered. Whoa! Alas, what in our house? Too cruel anywhere. I pretty dear doth contradict thyself and say it is not so. I was died an hour before this chance. I had lived a blessed time. What is amiss? You are, I do not know it, the spring, the head, the fountain of your blood is stopped. The very source of it is stopped. Your royal father's murdered. By whom? Grooms of his chamber, as it seemed, had done it. 
Their hands and faces were all bagged with blood. So were their daggers, which unwiped we found upon their pillows. They stared and were distracted. Oh, yet I do repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate and furious, loyal and neutral in a moment? No man. Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood. There the murderers, steeped in the colors of their trade. Who could refrain? They had a heart to love. And that hot courage to make his love known. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at the lady! Uh, help me, Hans! Oh! Why do we hold our tongues? Then most may claim this argument for us. What should be said here? Where our fate may rush and seize us! Let's away, our tears are not yet brewed. Nor our strong sorrow upon the foot of most. Look to the lady! Then let us meet and question this most bloody piece of work. To know it further, let us briefly put on manly readiness and meet in the hall together. Let us not consort with them. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office which the false man does easy. I'll to England. To Ireland I. Our separated fortune shall keep us both the safer. Where we are, there's daggers in men's smiles. This murderous shaft that shot hath not yet lighted. And our safest way is to avoid the aim. Therefore, to horse, and let us not be dainty of leave taking. Two score and ten I can remember well. Within the volume of which time I have seen hours dreadful and things strange. But this sore night hath trifled for my knowledge. By the clock tis day, and yet dark night strangles the traveling lamp. Is night's predominance, or the day's shame, that darkness does the face of earth entomb when living light should kiss it? Tis unnatural even like the deed that's done. On Tuesday last, a falcon towering in her pride of place was by a mousing owl hawked at and killed. And Duncan's horses, a thing most strange and certain, turned wild in nature, broke their stalls, flung out, contending against obedience as they would make war with mankind. Tis said they eat each other. They did so, to the amazement of mine eyes that looked upon. <clears throat> Here comes the good Macduff. How goes the world, sir? Now. Why? See you not. It's known who did this more than bloody deed. Those that Macbeth hath slain. Alas the day, what good could they pretend? They were suborned. Malcolm and Dalabane, the king's two sons, are stolen away and fled, which puts upon them suspicion of the deed. Against nature still, thriftless ambition that will swallow up their own life's means. And tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He is already named and gone to Scone to be invested. Will you to Scone? No. Cousin will home to fight. Well, we will thither. Well, may you see things well done there. Adieu. Lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Farewell. If he had been forgotten, it had been as a gap mm. in our great feast, and all thing unbecoming. Tonight, we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me, to the which my duties are with a most indissoluble tie forever knit. <laughs> Ride you this afternoon. Aye, my good lord. Ah, uh, we would have else desired your good advice in this day's council. Mm -hmm. But we'll take tomorrow. Is it far, you ride? As far, my good lord, as will fill up the time twixt this and supper. Fail not our feast. My lord, I will not. <laughs> oh, thou hast it now. 
King, Cawdor, Glams, all as the weird women promised. And I fear thou playedst most foully for it. Yet it was said, it should not stand in thy posterity, but that myself should be the root and father of many kings. If there come truth from them, as upon thee, Macbeth, their speeches shine. Why, by the verities on thee made good, may they not be my oracles as well? And set me up in hope? To be thus is nothing, but to be safely thus. Our fears in Banquo stick deep. There is none but he whose being I do dread. He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me and bade them speak to him. Then prophet-like, they hailed him father to a line of kings. Upon my head, they placed a fruitless crown and put a barren scepter in my grip, thence to be wrenched with an unlineal hand, no son of mine succeeding. If it be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind. For them, the gracious Duncan, have I murdered only for them. And my eternal soul given to the common enemy of man to make them kings. The seed of Banquo, kings. We hear our bloody cousins are bestowed in England and in Ireland, not confessing their cruel parricide, filling their hearers with strange invention. Hie you to horse, adieu, till you return at night. Goes Fleance with you. Aye, right, my good lord, our time does call upon us. I wish your horse is swift. And sure afoot. Farewell. Let every man be master of his time till seven at night. We will keep ourselves till supper time alone. Sira. Attend those men our pleasure. They are my lord without. Bring them before us. Now go to the door and stay there till we call. Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was. So please, Your Highness. Well then. Now, have you considered of my speeches? Uh. Know you that it was Banquo in the times past which held you so under fortune which you thought had been our innocent self? You made it known to us. And do you find your patience so predominant in your natures that you can let this go? We are men, my liege. I, in the catalogue, ye go for men, as Hounds and greyhounds, mastiffs, terriers, spaniels, mongrels, curs, and demi wolves are clept all by the name of dog. <coughs> and so of men. Now, I will put that business in your bosoms, whose execution takes your enemy off and grapples you to the heart and love of us. I am one, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed 
that I'm reckless what I do to spite the world. And I, another. Both of you know Banquo is your enemy. True, my lord. So is he mine. And though I could with bare-faced power sweep him from my sight, yet I must not for certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves I may not drop. Thence it is that I to your assistance do make love, masking the business from the common eye for sundry weighty reasons. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us. Your spirits shine. <laughs> it must be done tonight. And something from the palace. And with him. Fleance, his son, that keeps him company, whose absence is no less material to me than is his father's. We are resolved, my lord. Banquo, thy soul's flight, if it find heaven, must find it out tonight. Is Banquo gone from court? Aye, madam, but returns again tonight. I will attend the king's leisure. Aye, madam. Not had, all spent. Where our desire is not without content. Tis safer to be that which we destroy than by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How now, gentle my lord, why do you keep alone? of sorriest fancies your companions making, using those thoughts which should indeed have died with them they think on. Things without remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. We have scotched the snake, not killed it. She'll heal and be herself, whilst our poor malice remains in danger of her former tooth. So let the frame of things disjoint. Both the worlds suffer, ere we will eat our meal in fear and sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams that shake us nightly. Better be with the dead, whom we, to gain our peace, have sent to peace, than on the torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Duncan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. Treason hath done his worst. Nor steel, nor poison can touch him further. Look, my arms, come apace. It is he. Good, my lord. Sleek o'er your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial among our guests tonight. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowest that Banquo and his fleance live. But in them nature's copies not eternal. <laughs> That's comfort yet. <laughs> they are assailable. <laughs> then be thou jocking. It will be rain tonight. Let it come down! Oh, treachery! Ere the bat hath flown his cloistered flight, there shall be done a deed of dreadful note. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, till thou applaud the deed. Come. Sealing night. Scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day, and with thy bloody and invisible hand, cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. Light thickens, and the crow makes wing to the rookie wood. Good things of day begin to droop and drowse, while night's black agents to their praise do rouse. Thou marvelous at my words, but keep thee still. Things 
bad begun, make strong themselves by ill. You know your own degrees, enjoy, at first and last. <laughs> the hearty welcome. Our self will mingle with society and play the humble host. <laughs> oh, no. our hostess keeps her state, but in best time, we will require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends. For my heart speaks, they are welcome. Yeah. Yeah. See, they encounter thee with their hearts, thanks. <sighs> Among my friends. <sighs> Here, I'll sit in the midst. <laughs> Be large in mirth. <laughs> <laughs> Anon, we'll drink a measure. <laughs> There's blood on thy face. Uh, Tis bank woes then. Tis better thee without than he within. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut that we did for him. Thou art the best of the cutthroats. <laughs> Yet he's good that did the life of flails. If thou didst it, thou art the non perel. Most royal sir, flails is escaped. Then comes my fate again. I had else been perfect, whole as the marble, founded as the rock. The bank was safe. Aye. Safe in a ditch he buys. Thanks for that. <laughs> Get thee gone. My royal lord, you do not give the cheer. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet remembrance, sir. <laughs> May it please your highness sit. Now, good digestion wait on appetite <laughs> and health on both. Help! Help! <laughs> Mm. Here had we now our country's honor roofed. Were the graced person of our bank woe present, whom I will rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance. His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. Mm. Please, your highness, to grace us with your royal company. Yeah. <laughs> ah! What is it that moves, your highness? Which of you have done this? What, my good lord? Thou canst not say I did it! Never shake that gory locks at me! His highness is not well! Oh, stay, worthy friends! My lord is often thus, and hath been from his youth. No, prithee, be still. The fit is momentary. <laughs> Upon a thought he will again be well. Uh, if much you note him, you shall offend him and extend his passion. Drink and regard him not. <laughs> Are you a man? Aye, and a bold one. The dare look on that which might appall the devil. Shame itself! Why do you make such faces? When all's done, you look but on a stool. Prithee, see there! Behold! Lo! Oh, 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 oh. I say you! Why, what care I? If thou canst not, speak to! If charnel houses and our graves must send those that we bury back, our monuments shall be the maws of pipes! What? Quite unmanned in folly! If I stand here, I saw him. Fie for shame! Blood has been shed ere now. The times have been that when the brains were out, the man would die and there an end. But now they rise again with. Twenty mortal murders on their crowns. This is more strange than such a murder is. My worthy lord, your noble friends do lack you. I do forget. No. Do not muse at me, my most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity, which is nothing to those that know me. <laughs> Come, love and health to all, and then I'll sit down, give me some wine, 
cook. No, no, no. Fill full. I drink to the general joy of the whole company and to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss. Would he were here? To Banquo! To, to Banquo! Banquo. <laughs> Avant! And quit my sight! Let the earth hide thee! The bones are merrilish, thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou dost glare with. Think of this, good peers, but as a thing of custom. What man dare? I dare! Hello! Hello! Being gone, I am a man again. <coughs> Prithee, be still. You have displaced the mirth. <laughs> Can such things be and overcome us like a summer's cloud without our special wonder? You make me strange. Even to the disposition that I owe. For well, now I think you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks when mine is blanched with fear. What sights, my lord? I pray you speak no more. He grows worse and worse. Question enrages him. At once, good night. Stand not upon the order of your going, but go at once! Good night, and may better help attend his majesty. Uh, a, a kind good night to all. <laughs> it will have blood. They say blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move and trees to speak. Auguries and understood relations have by maggot pies and crows and rooks brought forth the secretest man of blood. What is the night? Almost at odds with morning, which is which. How sayest thou that Macduff Denies his person at our great bidding. Did you send to him, sir? I heard it by the way, but I will send. There's not a one of them, but in his house I keep a servant, feed. I will tomorrow to the weird sisters. <laughs> More shall they speak. For now I am bent to know by the worst means. The worst. I am in blood, stepped in so far that should I wait no more, returning were as tedious as go war. Strange things I have in head that will to hand, which must be acted ere they may be scanned. You lack the season of all natures. Sleep. Sleep. No. 